Hi folks, Dave here. Welcome back. Why do you need a thermal camera? Because they can see what your eyes cannot. And that's why everybody should have one, whether you're a DIYer, a solar power enthusiast, or just somebody who's curious about the way things really work. Is that circuit breaker I'm testing getting too hot? Well, there's no way to tell by just looking at it. Unless, of course, it's on fire. But the IR camera allows me to check this without even touching it with my hand. It's a great way to safely check circuit breakers without exposing yourself to any risk. As you can see, this circuit breaker is nowhere near overheating. But if it had said 150 degrees Fahrenheit, I would have been concerned. The camera I'm using here is called the Top Don TC004 Mini. And just to be clear, I put a link to it in the description, but I don't get paid if you click on it. Thanks to Top Don for supporting my channel by sending me this camera. Take my solar workshop, for example. You might think that the biggest solar collector on this structure is indeed the window. But in fact, that's not the case. The biggest solar collector is actually the outside shell of the entire building. Unfortunately, even though I have two inch thick foam board insulation in the walls, the large outside surface of the building actually gets very, very hot and that heat conducts right inside and into the metal posts which hold the building up. Thermal emissivity. What this means is that different materials will emit heat in a different way. So it's important to keep that in mind. For example, this black plastic here is going to emit heat differently than this shiny polished aluminum metal. This screen here is probably not going to give an accurate readout either. These cables here are white in color and they're plastic, so they might read a little different than reality. This blue LED voltage display is reading as pretty hot, but in reality it isn't. It's just because of the blue LEDs and the way they interact with the IR camera. Now that doesn't mean the information you get from the IR camera is useless, it's just one of the pitfalls you have to pay attention to and keep that in mind when you're using it. Many thermal cameras will have the option to adjust the thermal emissivity setting in the firmware. You can see here that this camera is set to 0.98. If you have solar power, another classic use of a thermal or IR camera is to check wires to see if they're getting too hot. It's usually not safe to feel conductors with your bare hands to see if they're getting too hot. They might be live and carrying high voltages. It's safer to use a thermal or IR camera. A thermal camera is able to very easily see if that wire is too hot or it's just getting a little warm. As you can see, this AC cable is right around 70 degrees, so it's really not a problem. But you can't know that just by looking at it. Is this insulated garage door working or not? Are there any leaks where the hot air could come in or the cold air could escape? Well, it's quite obvious that this expensive door has some thermal leaks. The naked eye cannot tell, but the thermal camera easily picks them up. A thermal camera can see all kinds of thermal leaks you didn't know were there. And it's probably better not to look if you're going to be worried about it, because they're absolutely everywhere. You can't see them, but they're there. I didn't even bother to read the manual. I just turned it on and started pointing it at things. And I think that's the way it should be. Refrigerators are notorious for having thermal leaks. Sometimes it can be bad seals or something else. But if you have a thermal camera, it can be fairly obvious if there's any problem. Which circuit breaker in your load center is carrying the heaviest load? This kind of information might seem a little bit tedious to get, but not with a thermal camera. Although you do need to distinguish between 120 volt and 240 volt circuits, the circuit breaker carrying the most current is going to be glowing the brightest on the screen. In this case, we were actually running the cooktop, and that was drawing quite a bit of power. A thermal camera will tend to bring out the scientist in anybody. Have you ever seen food cooking in the infrared spectrum? Looks like we're cooking around 311 degrees Fahrenheit. That's good to know. Again, we have to keep the concept of thermal emissivity in mind. Just because something looks hot on the screen may not necessarily mean what you think it does, but it's still interesting to point the camera at random objects and see what happens. In a previous video, I did a hardcore stress test of a 3500 watt pure sine wave inverter and I used the IR camera to look inside the inverter through the ventilation grill and I was able to see the temperature of the MOSFETs in real time without opening the inverter or disturbing the OEM cooling layout. I was using quad zero gauge cables and I was able to see the heating of these cables in real time to see if there were any hot spots or bad connections. Yet another example of where a thermal camera can be an indispensable tool for DIYers and solar power enthusiasts. So is the air conditioning compressor getting too hot? Well, without touching it, I don't really know. I don't have a way to track the temperature. But with an IR camera, I can look right through those grill vents and I can see the compressor is reaching almost 150 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning is certainly one of the top uses for a thermal camera. You can see at a glance if there's cold air or hot air coming out, whether there's any leaks, and whether a suction or a liquid line is getting too hot or too cold. In my opinion, this camera does everything it needs to do, especially considering the cost. If you want a simple thermal camera, I think I can recommend this one, but you should still do your own research and think through it before making a purchase. On this channel, I like to teach people to think for themselves and not depend on other people to do their thinking for them. I left a link in the description, and just a reminder that I don't make any money from sales if you click on it. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you out. If you don't mind, please thumbs up the video and also leave a comment. That helps my work gain more exposure on this platform. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.